Linux permissions can be a bit confusing, so let's demystify that by learning how to modify permissions using Bash. I'll begin with an overview of Linux permissions. So to see the permissions on a particular directory or files, you can use ls-l, and that L option will include the permission set. At the very start of the line, is the file type. So whenever there's a hyphen, that means that it is a file. And if you see D, that stands for directory. So anything with D across here that is also highlighted in green is a directory, and anything with a hyphen is a file. So that's that first position means. Now the next set, this RW here, is the user's permission. So the user that's assigned to this these are the permissions that they have. The next is the group permissions. So the group that is assigned to it, that's the permissions that they have, followed by other permissions. So if you aren't in the group or you aren't a user that's assigned these permissions, then the other permissions is what you get assigned. What follows those permissions is um, the number of hard links, and that's not particularly useful in setting permissions. Um, but to the next, uh, to the right of that is the owner. So the owner of this file is VS Code, and the owner has the most permissions of anyone. The owner can read, write, execute, but most importantly, they are also the one that has the ability to change the permissions and to grant permissions on the file or folder. After the owner is the group owner. So just like the owner, the group members of the group owner group can do the same things that the owner does. So there's owner and owner group. Now, what follows is the number of bytes or the size rather um, of the file and then the date modified. And lastly, the file name. So to reiterate, these first groups here are what's most important when you're setting the file permissions. And again, this is the user permissions. So if you're going to assign a specific user permissions, this is what they get for the file. If you're going to assign a group permissions, this is these are the permissions the group would get. And then other, if they're not a user assigned or a group assigned permissions, these are the default permissions that a user would get. So now with that review out of the way, let's move on and take a look at how we can change the ownership of a file or directory. If you want to follow along with this exercise, go to the root of this workspace, the bash for beginners, and then change into the modifying file permissions. And then inside here, there will be a directory and a file that will change the permissions on. So the command that you need to know to change the ownership of a file or directory is the chown command. So if we were to type chown and look at the help for this command and scroll to the top so we could see how to use it, we could see that we could provide the options, but then the syntax for this is the owner or group and then the file name. But notice when you specify a group that you also need to include a colon. We'll take a closer look at that in just a second. So I'll clear my screen and let's take a look at the new files permissions. So currently the owner of this file is VS Code and I want to change that to the root user. So to do that, I'm going to need to use sudo because I'm elevating to the to the root user and I'll use the chown command. So C-H-O-W-N and then I need to specify the new owner, which would be root and then the name of the file, which is new file txt. Now, when I take a look with ls-l again, I will see that the owner has been updated to root. So that's how you change the user who owns the file. But what if you wanted to change the group? So the next thing here is there's this VS Code group that also is an owner, but I want to change that to the root group as well. And to do that, I'll still need to use sudo, but I will use chown and then I'll use a colon in front. And this denotes that I'm changing a group and not a user. So I want to assign the group root as the owner of the new file txt. And now when I take a look at the permission set for new file, I can see that the user root is the owner and the group root is the owner, the group owner. There is another command that you can use if you don't want to use the chown command to change group and it's called the change group command. But to do that, we will have to change back the owner of the new file back to VS Code. So we'll do sudo chmod or chown and then the name of the user, which we want to be VS Code, and then new file txt. So now VS Code is the owner again, because without ownership permissions, you can't use the change group command. That's one of the 
uh, permissions that's granted to the owners, they are the ones that have the ability to change the permissions on the file. So now I can change the roof. If we do ls-l new file, I can see that VS Code is the owner, but the group is written. I want to change that group back to VS Code with a different command. So it's the change group. So chgrp is how you would spell that command. And then you just put the name of the group, which is VS Code in this case, and then the name of the file that you want to change, which is just new file. And if we take a look at the permissions for new file, it's back to the way it was where the owner is VS Code and then the group owner is also the group VS Code. The chone and change group command deal with the ownership of a file, but what about the different permissions of a file? Well, the command to modify the permissions in Bash is chmod, so C-H-M-O-D. So there are two ways that you can use the chmod command. You can use a letters to represent the permissions or you can use the octal format. So in this directory, I have a script named script.sh and right now it only has read write permissions for the user, the group, and then other. So if I try to execute this script, I'm going to get a permissions denied error. Now I can use the octal format or I can use just the letter to represent the permissions. So I want to assign execute permissions to everyone um, or every one of those permission sets. So to do that, I would use the chmod plus and then a lowercase x for adding the execute permissions. If I wanted to put read, I'd put r, but I'm adding, so I'm using the plus sign and then the name of the file. Now, if I look at the permission set for script now, you'll see that it has read, write, execute across all three different groups. So user, group permissions, and other. And now when I go to execute the script, it works. Now let's say I wanted a little bit more control over the permissions that I was setting and I want to be able to set the owner permissions, the group permissions, and the other permissions at the same time. That's where the octal format comes in. And to see an example of this, we can look at this uh, octal txt. This can be found in the sample files of this repository in this code space. I'll walk through how you would set those different permissions using the octal format because it's a little bit confusing at first. It's a bunch of uh, numbers that you put together that assign the permissions. But it's really not that bad once you break it down. So remember, the first placeholder is for the owner of the file or directory. The next is the group. And then the final one is others, anyone that's not been explicitly assigned permissions. And if you look at this, the read, write and execute each have a value assigned to them, a numeric value assigned to them. So the R is worth four points, if you kind of think of it that way. The W is worth two and the X is worth one. So if you, you've probably seen this before where you put chmod 777. That's just giving everybody all the rights all the time so you don't have to worry about it. Um, in Active Directory, it'd be equivalent like a domain admin. You just have all the keys of the kingdom. But hopefully after this, you'll be able to give a little bit more fine-grained permission sets because you'll understand it. So again, if we wanted to lower the permissions on the script file and remove all execute from everybody, we could give them a read and write which would be a total of six, so four plus two equals six, and that would be that first placeholder. So this is for the owner. The next would be the group. So if we wanted to give them read and write for the group, that would be six. But then for everybody else, we don't even want them to be able to write, we want them to be able to read, and that would be four. So to change those permissions um, to a lower permission set, we would, or more constrained permissions, we would use chmod 664, which would be the octal format, and then script. And now when I try to run script, I'll get the permission denied error again, because I no longer have execute as an owner or part of a group or other. And to add those back, another very common use of the chmod is the plus X, which gives the execute permissions. And if I do that again, everybody has execute and the permissions are changed. And now I can, I can run the script.